So my name is David Carr. I'm a writer, editor, uh, and digital creator who has uh, worked in the technology industry for many years. I was a technology journalist for a long time. Uh, more recently, I've been doing more marketing and PR work for a company called SimilarWeb that measures web performance. Hi. Not yet. I get it in the morning. Okay. I got to go to Minerva in the morning. So I'm going to mute whoever was talking there for, for the moment. You can uh, unmute when you need to. It looks like they took themselves off. Okay. Um, so a, a number, number of years ago, I, I went looking for a better uh, website solution for my club. Uh, I, I wasn't that impressed with, with Free Toast Toast. And I thought we could do something better using WordPress, which I already had some experience with the, at that point. And I've got a lot more experience over the last decade. Uh, it is really uh, working on this. Uh, this is the so the, I refer sometimes to the WordPress for Toastmasters project, which is the open source software project to extend WordPress and add features for Toastmasters clubs. Uh, I, most people probably know it as Toastmost or Toastmost.org, which is where you can go and sign up to get one of these sites. It's at least the most convenient way of doing it, uh, unless you have the skills to download software and set up your, your own web server. So I'm going to take you through a few details uh, on screen just to give you an orientation. Uh, Club Awesome in Coral Springs, Florida, was the original WordPress for Toastmasters website. Um, you know, still, still growing strong. I've been a member there since 2010. And so I'll use that in some of my examples. Uh, there is also a demo site. So you can go over to my demo site and you can, you can sign in using a, a fake user who's um, whose username is uh, Ralph C. Smedley. Uh, and you can experiment with signing up for roles, get a little bit of the a sense of the experience. I'll show some things there just so that we're not messing up the, the live website. Uh, Toastmouse.org is the software as a service version of the software. It is where you can go in, you create an account, you get yourself a website and you can get started. Uh, there's a three month free trial. And after that it is $50 a year. And part of what I need to do tonight is explain to you why it's worth $50 a year, uh, what you're getting in additional value beyond what you can get with the free Toast Toast, which has the advantage of being free from Toastmasters International. Uh, in addition to what I'm sharing tonight, there is a whole video course uh, that you can ac get access to. There is a, a website called wp4toastmasters.com. If you go there, you can see a whole series of modules. It's broken up so you can skip around to see the stuff that you think you need to learn more. Uh, and that may break down some things that are... I might not have time to go into tonight. Uh, on the other hand, what I'm giving you tonight is up to date. And this was created a little while ago. So there might be a few things that are a little bit out of sync uh, between what's documented and what's what's live on the site today. And uh, just for context, what we're talking about is a modification of WordPress. Now, WordPress is the world's most popular website building platform. Uh, it's used by small bloggers. It's used by publications like The New Yorker. If you go to thenewyorker.com, you're seeing a very professional and customized WordPress site, but it's a WordPress site. Uh, same thing with the uh, TechCrunch technology publication. Uh, built on WordPress and, and customized needs. So I've, I've, that's sort of what I've done, is I've taken the, the base and... I've modified it so that certain things happen, such as when you search for Toastmasters Coral Springs, which is where my home club is located, we're the number one ranked website. We're not the only site in town, but we're the one that comes up first 
because we have a greater depth of content than a lot of other sites. If I, if I use a more generic search term like Toastmasters near me, well, you get the find a club from Toastmasters International up top, you get some other results mapped out, and then you get us. So, so it's, it's still high up in the list. That assumes that people know what Toastmasters is enough to be Googling for Toastmasters. Uh, social media is a way that we can let our friends know about the value of Toastmasters. And so that's another way where I've customized the social media preview to be attractive. And when people get to the website, they can see that this club has a lot going on. It has great people in it. It's done some workshops that there are blog posts and videos on that I can see that show me that this is a club worth visiting. I can click on the RSVP Now button and go through this process of providing a little bit more detail about myself. Do I have any Toastmasters experience? Am I local? Or will I be joining on Zoom or in person? And I can register to come to the next meeting as a guest. So part of what I'm trying to show you is the whole life cycle is ideally this person comes as a guest and they're so impressed that they do want to join. So we tell them to come to the join page on our website where they can find a digital version of the Toastmasters application. And I have gone through a process of getting this verified with Toastmasters International that this is acceptable. So I can say that because I'm at the end of the month, I want to start September 1st and I'm gonna fill in the form. Uh, I'll actually switch over to my demo site to fill in the form. By the way, if you can't tell, this is a recorded demo, but that's to, to save time. You'll see me do some live stuff in just a few moments. But this includes all the same information as the PDF or printed form. I'm gonna go through and check off a few things. I, I put in all my address and email information that I'm required to collect. And then I'm going to type my name to sign. And that is considered a legal digital signature up to a point where you say, I acknowledge that this is my signature. Uh, you type it in. And as soon as we finish, we have a prompt to pay. Now here it's uh, by PayPal. I also support a service called Stripe, which is a little bit more straightforward, just credit card processing. But a lot of people like PayPal. Uh, that's supported as well. So the membership VP is going to get an email notification that there's a, a pending application, and they can come in. They can see that the person has already paid via PayPal. They can review that application. And again, to approve it, we're going to type the name as digital signature, and we can add a note if we want. And one of the advantages of doing it this way, besides the fact that we don't have to email PDFs back and forth if we're doing something long distance, um, we don't have to have a printed uh, form uh, handy either in a, in a physical meeting, is that that application gets archived on the website. As soon as we approve them as a member, we can create an account for them uh, as part of the process so that they can come in and start signing up for roles. So this, that prompt to create an account generates an email that gets sent off to the member. The member gets a message saying, welcome to Toastmost Demo, or welcome to Club Awesome, or welcome to online presenters, whatever the club is, with details on how to come in and set a password. So they can do that. They can set up their account. I'm not going to go through all of that. But once they're a club member, they can come into this digital agenda. They can scroll down. They can see what open roles there are, and they can sign up to give the rice breaker or whatever their next speech would be. But in our, our scenario here, this is a, a brand new person. They're going to give their all about me speech. So we can, this person can put that in. Uh, save those details to the website, and we can then uh, take a look at what the printable version of that agenda looks like. Uh, notice there's also a link there to a digital evaluation form. 
Um, so I've tried to make uh, many things to be available more web native uh, as opposed to emailing PDFs back and forth. So this is what the default layout is for the printable agenda, uh, designed to print on more or less one page. And then ideally, this person gets so intrigued, they move into leadership, they're starting their own club, and they're going to remember Toastmost and come back here and sign up for a member account. Uh, that's that's my theory. So they're going to put in their, their district, their club number, uh, where they meet, where in the world they are, and put in some details about their schedule. So they're going to meet at uh, 2 p.m. and... Uh, not New York, but Chicago time. And we, we want the system to know timing and time zones so that they can send out reminders. Um, there are a number of automated features built in. We can choose a starter design, and then later on we can modify that design. So I'm going to submit this, and I'll get back an acknowledgement. It'll run for a few seconds, and it's going to show us that it's adding the meeting templates. Uh, really, we're just kind of stalling for time to make let the, give the software a moment to work, but we're getting some acknowledgement that something is happening on the back end. Uh, and when it's done, these instructions all get emailed off to me. They're also visible on screen. And the first step is to come in and visit my new website and there is something called a setup wizard that's supposed to guide me through the first few steps of getting it set up. So this is what it would look like in my email. I can click to visit the website. Um, what I have at this point is just kind of a, a very, very bare bones outline of a website. It did pick up the schedule information that I put in in the beginning and put at the top of the home page, but we're going to need to customize all this. That's part of what I'm going to go through tonight is how you can customize these things and maybe jazz them up a little bit uh, along the way. And then there is this, this uh, setup wizard that is supposed to guide you through the first few steps of setting up your site. So I'll, I'll go over that live. So I'm going to stop the recording part and we'll get that out of the way. Uh, and in a moment, we can go into a little bit more, a um, little bit more discussion. So we, we, we had a miscue getting started here where the, there was an issue with the zoom link. So I apologize that we're, we're starting a, a few minutes late. But I wonder if you guys could, could just give me an indication. Uh, I know Sarah has an existing Tesmos website. Well, give me an idea of where you're starting from. I mean, maybe you could put in the chat um, or shout it out whether you um, you're who is there is there anybody here who is learning about all this stuff from the for the very first time, uh, and you needed uh, started from it from very basics. Okay. Uh, Jay, at least, is at that point, um, and some of the the others are are maybe, you know, going to be getting some uh, refreshers or uh, coming coming with questions, which is part of what the session is about too, is to uh, answer your questions along the way. Uh, so, is there anything that, that that any of you would like to tell me right up front? You want to make sure that I cover, because I, I have a I have a to do list. I promised a bunch of things that I would cover tonight, um, but if you have some that you you definitely want me to hit, uh, feel free to shout it out now. And if not, I will I will move ahead. Um, and, I, and I will mention too that I'm I am in the market. If anybody is interested for volunteers to work on helping to round out the documentation, to to build, to create a, a video training for for other people, or or just to do some tutorials on this stuff at your TLIs or, or other training events. 
So I'm looking for folks to uh, help spread the word. But if there are no immediate questions, I'm going to go back to my demo here. Um, and try and, let's see, I'll just do it this way. All right. So I, I stopped at the point where I got to the setup wizard. And the idea here is that there, there are actually a lot of things that you can set up and configure, but you can set them up on uh, lots of different screens. Uh, uh, you might have to hunt around a little bit to find them. Um, and so to, to give you a quick start, I have this sort of a poll asking you to, to fill in the blanks. So when you start your meetings, how long do you allow for basic introductions? Uh, how much you know? How much time is there for officers to introduce themselves? That kind of stuff. Uh, when the, the Toastmaster of the day introduces themselves, how long are we going to allow them? What kind of supporting roles do we have on the agenda? Uh, things like a counter. Uh, my club has a body language monitor. Uh, one club has a body language monitor. One has a, the online presenters club has what's called a watcher because we're more watching the, the Zoom environment. Uh, do we have a grammarius, a humor, a timer, a counter? You know, some some standard roles, some that are a little bit custom and you can, you can change that list. So on the agenda, it's usually set up by default. So the Toastmaster of the day introduces themselves. They introduce these other functionaries. And then we get into our speakers and our table topics. How many speakers do we have at a typical meeting? So the default here is three, but we could make it four, we could make it two, we could make it whatever. Uh, if we do table topics, when do we do that? Do we do that before speakers? Do we do it after speakers and before evaluators at the end of the meeting? Or we don't do table topics? Um, and again, these may not be all the things that you need to customize, but it's meant to give you a starting point based on the way a lot of clubs uh, run their meetings. Uh, do you take a break at some point? And when do you do that? You do that before speakers, after speakers, after evaluators. Anyways, you, you get the idea. Um, there is a, a widget that appears on the digital agenda that allows people to say, uh, I'm not going to be able to make it to this next meeting or I'm, I'm going to be away for three weeks. So it just is a way of keeping track of who's out of town so that we don't keep bugging the people who already told the, us that they're on vacation. We don't keep bugging them to take a role. We, we uh, go to the people who are actually around. Uh, do we include an officer's li listing on the digital agenda or, or, the, or the printed agenda? Uh, do we invite guests to register online? That's the RSVP function that I was showing on the Club Awesome website. Uh, do we show the time zone on our events? Well, if we're if we're doing a local 100% person club, time zone is not very important. But if we're virtual or if we're hybrid, it's pretty important to see the time zone. And there's a little time zone converter widget too that allows you to to see uh, what that time would be in your local time. So um, I'm supposed to make a bunch of these, these choices and I click and it should create a, a whole batch of these agendas for the meetings coming up. So it's gonna do it based on the schedule that we gave it, which was Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Now, it might be that one of these days falls on a holiday and you'd have to go through and, and remove that. Uh, or you, well, <laughs> this one falls on Christmas. So we, we might want to remove that. So I have a little trash link here, which hopefully will work. That's not going to work. Okay. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> uh that's one of the joys of a live demo, uh, particularly when you're the, the person who created the software. You have to apologize when things don't work uh, the way that they're supposed to. Um, but the idea here is that we can go through this process. There's a prompt to set up a couple of additional user accounts. So if I want to, 
if I'm the president, but I want to invite in my VP of education and my VP of PR, I can do that right here just by putting in their name and email address. And I could say if they want, I want them to be an administrator, uh, have editing rights. So an editor can edit anything on the, the public content of the site, uh, but they might not be able to change some of the technical parameters. You know, some of it comes down to people's comfort level with technology, uh, people's competence with technology. You have to uh, assess some of those things. And you can also set their officer's role from here. Uh, and when you come to the end of the wizard, it's going to give you some jumping off points for where to go next. So you can come in and edit your homepage. And that's, that's probably what we'll go ahead and do next to give you an idea of how you you do edit the the marketing content of your website and i'm going to show want to show you some specific things about that uh then there is how to start editing the agenda or working with the agenda uh so we can we can go through some of those things along the way too uh let's see let me uh pause and take a breath anybody have a, a question they want to shout out right at the moment or should we go ahead to editing the home? There are two questions, two questions in the chat. Okay, thank you. Um, you see the chat. Uh, we currently use a Google Sheet for signups to this tool. Increase the signups, roles are speaking slots. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> it's, it certainly is designed to do that. There, there, there are a lot of tools that, that I have built in to, for example, allow you to send out the agenda by email as it is today. Uh, and if there are any openings on the agenda where nobody has taken the role, people will see a, a, a link that says one click sign up. Yes, uh, yes, Janet, this is being recorded and, uh, and the recording will be shared uh, afterwards. Um, so it, I, I would think it's going to use, work better for you than than a Google Sheet. Uh, my, you know, part of what I'm trying to get away from is having to manage things in lots of different places. So the 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 theory behind um, the website, I, I think of there's a saying in um, in computer science uh, in uh, digital intelligence about having one version of the truth. So rather than having several different spreadsheets and people might have different copies of the spreadsheet, try and have things in one place. Um, so that when you're signing people up for the meeting, you can look at the website to see what roles are already filled. Uh, you're not asking people to sign up for roles that are already filled. So I'm gonna go through the, the functional agenda uh, management pieces uh, in a few minutes, but let's take a moment just to look at how you would edit your homepage. Because one of the, ma the main things that you're getting access to here is this world-class digital publishing system. And uh, the fact that you have access to it doesn't necessarily automatically make your website wonderful, but you have the tools to make it wonderful. Um, I guess what I found with Free Toast Toast is that it was easy to set up a one-page website, but if you wanted to go much beyond that, then I found it frustrating pretty fast. Um, whereas here, you can have a blog built in, you can embed video very easily, you can have the agenda management, and you can promote special events too, not just organize uh, Toastmasters meetings. Uh, and so uh, District 62 ran their, their, their sign up for their district conference uh, over the RSVP maker function that I showed you earlier uh, with the payment uh, built in at the end of the process. But let's look at let's look at the um, the home page that we have so far for this test site. Uh, and we're opening this up in the editor. Uh, and it says, welcome to August Club. We meet every Wednesday here. Uh, and this is where we would want to start to add some description 
here is what makes us different. And you spell out something about the nature of your club, what makes it special, the kind of people you have in it, whether you're you're welcoming to beginners or whether you're an advanced club for the people who have a lot of experience. You want to sort of sp spell out those parameters. So the, the people who are the correct audience for your club, the, the people who might want to become members uh, know to move forward. Uh, and the people who maybe aren't appropriate for your club know that they should look someplace else. So this is um, just text, a paragraph. One of the things that I want you to notice as I move through the editor is that if I'm editing a paragraph, I get one set of controls on the button bar up here and controls over on the side. Uh, if I'm editing a heading, I'll get a slightly different set of controls. So for a heading, I can decide whether it's heading one, heading two, heading three. So it's just, there's sort of a hierarchy. Uh, and you you use these heading level, levers re, levels rather than just marking text bold, uh, partly for your readers, but also partly as a signal to the search engines uh, that this thing is really important, this thing's a little bit less important. And so that helps a search engine parse out the page and know what to emphasize the most, uh, what to rank you on the most. So I can put in a heading. If I type enter, I get uh, another blank line, which by default will be a paragraph. I can answer some text. I can decide that that text should be a different color. And one of the things you should notice about the colors is these are Toastmasters International brand colors. So I'm trying to keep you out of trouble there. Uh, I, I've been known to get in trouble myself uh, with Toastmasters International, uh, and I'm trying to make sure that you won't have the issues that, that I've had with them from time to time. So you... Uh, you can change the, the text color. You can change the background. There are a number of other things about the spacing of the content that you can change, uh, uh, how large that text should be. And then if I want to add something other than a plain paragraph, I have these little plus buttons that appear down the end of every blank line. There's also one up here. This is add a block. And so when I add a content block, I can choose what kind of content block I want that to be. It might be a lot of times you just want to go in and, and type a bunch of stuff if you're writing a blog post. But sooner or later, probably you want to add an image. You want to add an image. Uh, you could also add an image gallery, which might be, be fun. Uh, so there's a basic image gallery built in. There are more elaborate build image galleries that you could plug in. But for a basic image, I can either choose from my media library, which is everything that I've up to, uploaded to this website previously, uh, which is not going to be much right now, uh, or I can upload from my computer. And uh, let's see, I'll find... Um, this image to upload. Uh, and when I upload an image, I also have a, a lot of choices actually here. I can either keep the large version, the full size version, a medium version, a little squared off thumbnail. Uh, if I have the large version, I can decide whether I want to keep the original proportions or if I want to square it off. Um, or even make it uh, vertical as in uh, uh, portrait orient orientation is what, what designers call it. So it, it it does a lot of this stuff automatically. What One, one of the things I've noticed looking at free toast host sites, and I, I looked at a bunch of them a while ago for an article I was writing, uh, I saw an awful lot of occasions where people had an image uploaded into the page and the people were, were either squished or the people were stretched. 
uh, because somebody had resized that image without understanding how to resize things proportionally. Um, and, you know, people don't, don't appreciate necessarily being made to look fatter than they actually are um, or, or to be squished. Um, so this helps you avoid some of those mistakes. Uh, there are also things in here where uh, it invites you to put in alternative text. And so this is, uh, for one thing, it's for the search engines. It's also supposed to be uh, for the for the uh, hearing, uh, for the uh, visually impaired um, or the, uh, anyways, it, it's a, an accessibility feature to put in alternate text for people who may, may not be able to see the uh, image clearly, there are screen readers for the web that can read a web page to the the blind, uh, and it can't do that if it doesn't have a, a few clues that you've added in there. So these are some things that you can do to start to customize your home page. Also, you have some opportunities to lay things out a little bit. You can add something called the columns block. And if I add the, let's see, let's do it over here. So when I add the columns block, it invites me to say whether that should be two columns, three columns, four columns, whatever, uh, and whether they should be even columns or whether I want a, a skinny one and a fat one. Um, and so this is a way of organizing content. So maybe you want to have a heading over here that is pro. Um, and on the other side, we will put con. And we can have a bunch of uh, bullet points under underneath each of them about the, the pro and con positions. So. So. Um, one of the things that can get a little bit complicated is that when you're working with these these layout blocks, um, sometimes it's hard to see exactly what you're working with. So there's this, in the upper left-hand corner, there's a button called the Outline View, Document Overview, that allows you to see this hierarchy. Uh, so we can see that most of these are just one after the other, but down here we have columns. We have our left column and we have our right column. And we can select these. We can change the width of them. Uh, we can maybe apply a background color uh, and a text color um, to them to somehow set them off. So we can have the pro be yellow and the, and the con be white. So th th there's just tons of things that you can can do with this. So let me get out of this and we'll see. I mean, this is going to look a little bit messy when we go out to see our home page, but we'll see the changes we've made. We've got a library image. We've got our customized paragraph here. And then we have this widget that is displaying our upcoming meetings with the RSVP now button. And because we said that this club meets in central daylight time, and I said I'm in Eastern oh, time, well, if they're offering Zoom, uh, I would need to, to know what that conversion is if I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, I actually can also switch this to show uh, what it would be in a different time zone. So I put actually quite a bit of work into that to, so if I want to come in from Mercado base and uh, in Antarctica uh, that's the time that it would I would need to show up when we're on the public website the option to go back into the editor is at the top of every page so it was at the top of the welcome page it's at the top of the members page. And so I can go in and edit any of these pages from here. Uh, 
if I want to add something new to the site, if I want to add something to the blog, well, the blog right now has one entry in it that says we're creating a WordPress for Toastmasters website. If I want to add a new one, maybe this is going to be the replay of a video that we've of a, a special workshop that we held. And then I could add, say, the YouTube block. And I would just paste in here the the web address of that YouTube video. Uh, and it would embed it in the page and automatically embed the proper player code so that people can play the video right on your website. There is all, actually, you, you don't even need to do this. You can just copy a link from YouTube to a specific video, paste it into the page, and it will automatically insert the player code. I just didn't have a, a video handy at the moment. So the other thing I wanted to show you is I wanted to get across this concept of blocks. Um, and I, I realize I'm throwing a lot at you. Uh, that's part of why it's important to know that, again, there is a whole video tutorial series on the WordPress for Toastmasters website where you can see these things more at your own pace. You can follow up with me with questions. But one thing I wanted to show you is what the digital agenda looks like. We saw it a little bit in the recorded video. And this actually has a, a few different modes to it. One is where I'm acting as myself. If I want to sign up for a role, I can put myself in. Um, that should be easier to show this on the, the demo site where I have a bunch of uh, phony personalities uh, set up. If I want to edit who's the Toastmaster of the day, I can come in here uh, and choose any member. So I can make Abraham Lincoln Toastmaster of the day instead. And uh, he'll be popped in there. So there is sign up where you're signing up yourself. There is edit where we're assigning other people. There's also just kind of a skinny down version over here. Uh, and I sometimes use this at the end of the meeting where we're trying to sign people up for roles where I want to just see who what roles are already filled. And I say, well, we, we have room for a speaker number two and Amy Pond volunteers. So I'll plug her in. So this is where you can see, so you're not signing people for paroles when somebody else has already volunteered for it. There is this suggest mode, which is when we come to a blank one like this speaker here, instead of assigning somebody, I can send out a suggestion. Uh, this is for backup speaker actually. But I, it'll it'll come through to them with a message saying, I'm nominating you for a role, or we can customize this to say something a little bit different. And when I send this off, this is what they'll get by email. I'm nominating you for a role. To confirm, click here. If you won't be able to attend, click there. Um, and the subject line is going to be, I'm nominating you to be the, the backup speaker for this meeting. There is also a digital evaluation form in here. I'm not going to go through that, but uh, partly it's because I have a prejudice against uh, emailing PDFs back and forth. But one important uh, tab here is this one called Organize. This is where I can move roles around on the agenda. So maybe we've been running our meetings for a while and we decide that doing table topics before the speakers isn't working that well for us. So we want to move table topics to the very end of the meeting. And so I can move these things up and down just by using these up and down buttons. Uh, or I can also say that I want to move it down to the end.
And so that should pop topics master down to the end, right before our president wraps up the meeting. Um, and part of the purpose of this tool is to allow you to also time out how you're planning out your meeting. Uh, so you can see that if I increase the amount of time allocated to table topics, the, the time will change. You see it's changing up here. So it was like 712 and now I have it up to 720 because I'm allocating more time. And it tells me that based on what I've set up here, a meeting will end at uh, 721 PM. And so, you know, maybe I'm trying to make the meeting longer. Maybe I'm trying to make it shorter. Uh, you're able to see that using this tool. Now, this actually can also be edited as a series of content blocks because the agenda is actually just a specialized WordPress document. And so you can also come into the editor and change things here. Uh, and so this is where we would set the amount of time that we give the Toastmaster of the day to introduce themselves. It's just a little bit harder to see kind of the running tally of what it is we, we've changed. Uh, but there can be advantages to doing it this way too. Um, so, but I could come in here um, and I want to add a role and do role and Toastmasters agenda role. And then in the, the sidebar over here, I would choose what role I want that to be. Uh, maybe maybe we're doing a contest at this meeting and this is going to be my chief judge. So that's, that is um, some of how you can make adjustments to your meetings. There's some other widgets besides roles on here. Uh, one called an editable note is meant for things like theme and word of the day that you change at every meeting. Uh, you can also just have uh, notes that are pretty much the same for every meeting. Uh, and in, each of these things can have, if it's an activity on your agenda, it can have some time associated with it. So I'm going to stop the screen share for a moment. Um, and there may be, uh, okay, I've got somebody who has, or I don't know whether this is your actual situation. If we have two types of meetings each month, say two times a month, a regular meeting, and one time have a special workshop or event, do you have different agendas based on a, on a schedule or is it just one template? No, it doesn't have to be one template. Um, so what, I'm, what I've been working with here is I went in actually and I was editing the the changes that I made so far would have only applied to a single meeting. So I, I should explain that uh, clearly first. So I, I moved some things around and but they would only change for this individual meeting, except that if I come into the organized screen, there is a button here that says apply to all. So maybe we try we we try out something different for one or two meetings, and then we decide we want this to apply to all our upcoming meetings. We can click apply to all, and it's going to modify the template that this is based on, and it's also going to modify all the individual meetings. So um, in if I go back into my dashboard, The place that all the meeting events are listed is under RSVP events. And something I kind of breezed past is there, there is a plugin called RSVP Maker, which I've been working on for a number of years. It was originally created for a political campaign. Um, Excuse me, David, been... we're not seeing your screen. Are you sharing? Oh. We're not seeing. How, how long have I not been sharing? Was I not sharing the whole time I was just explaining how to agenda, edit the agenda? No, maybe a couple of minutes. Okay. All right. I 
Oh, that's right, because I block I dropped out to ask questions. Um well let's see, I didn't I there was the thing that I was trying to explain about uh, there's a button for apply to all events. Maybe I'll have to go go back to that. But since I'm here, uh RSVP events is where all the RSVP maker documents are listed. So the the, the idea is that you edit them just like a blog post. Um, if you're doing promotional content, like advertising this webinar, um, and they've been extended to support being uh, uh, agenda models. Uh, so these are the individual meetings. We could edit any of the individual meetings, but the individual meetings are based on a template. And we, when we were going through that routine with the... Uh, with the setup wizard, what we were doing was we were customizing the template and then we were customizing all the, uh, generating all the individual events based on that template. So we do have a few different ones in here. Oh, I'm see, I'm on my demo site, which is why I'm seeing some of this stuff. Um, but we have, we have one called Monday Safari, which is a different format. And I don't even, I don't remember what, what this was. So this will be a surprise. Uh, it's just blank right now. Uh, but Monday Safari could be anything. Maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is a social event that you want to advertise on your site. You could collect RSVPs for that as well. And you would just have sort of your marketing content in here. Uh, but we unionizing have. Unionizing? Unionized. Right. Somebody's. Uh, it's unmuted, just... and I don't know whether you're trying to ask me a question or whether you're just uh, unmuted by accident. Okay, sounds like unmuted by accident. But for example, we have uh, templates for a few different types of contests. So here is a template, which is the uh, meeting roles of contest master, chief judge, timer, ballot counter, and table topics contestants. And it's set up to allow six contestants. We could change that. Uh, and as of right now, the template is just set up saying that the schedule varies. There's no no regular schedule on which we we host a uh, table topics contest. Uh, this is just to be plugged in as needed. Um, and so if I click on this little link here that says create update, it'll come in by default and it will just show me the first of the, the next several months. Whereas when we set up our regular meeting template, say we set up our regular meeting template, we specified every Wednesday uh, on this schedule or uh, actually, I'm confusing myself because I'm on my demo site still, not the uh, the regular one. But this was every Wednesday, and instead of in the afternoon, it's supposed to be from six thirty to eight. So what you could do is say instead, this is going to be not every meeting, but it's going to be the second, third, fourth, and last meeting of the month. We follow this regular format, and then I'll create. I can create a separate template that would have the whatever is different about the first meeting of the month. So that is a, a way you could model this within the, the system. Um, and so I, I do have some clubs that, that do kind of an every other week, they alternate back and forth between, between different formats or something like that. Uh, here's how you would support that. And Maybe we would um, let's see. Maybe we would modify this to say instead of Toastmasters meeting, this is going to be our regular meeting format. And now that I've made some changes and I save this, it's going to prompt me to update the existing events that were based on this template. Uh, and I, it's not, it's not automatically going to delete those first 
Monday of the month. But if we if we go forward, we would start to see that in future months, uh, it will uh, it will follow the schedule that we've established, and so we can check off some more of these uh, and add them to the schedule. And when we go in and view that, we should see that up top, it's now um, has some changes. <clears throat> All right. See, I have a, a punch list of things that I wanted to, to get to. Let's see. And John's saying something about, um, I wanted to tie a CRM to the registration page for the classes with the RSVP events and doesn't do a full submit. Okay, I, would, I mean, I would have to know what CRM uh, you're talking about, um, you know, I mean, you, you might want to use uh, one or the other. Um, is there a way to compile the, the guest inquiry emails and use it later for follow-up? Let's see. Um, I might not necessarily be understanding the question, but let me, I did have the... So the when when somebody RSVPs, you can have one or more people notified by email, uh, but there is also this RSVP report that that summarizes the list. So I have an RSVP report that lists out all the people who registered for tonight's webinar. Uh, that's part of where I was finding the emails to write to folks and say, is there is there a problem? Why can't why aren't people here? Um, so uh, you can uh, you can also list um, by uh, the see the next several events um, or the, or the uh, previous previous several events. So yes, the the information is captured. I mean, I think of it. You think of it is is you're capturing leads essentially for. Um, for your VP of membership to follow up on. So it's it's sort of an RSVP, uh, a CRM system. Um, there are functions for things like automatically sending out a reminder before the meeting is uh, scheduled to begin, which could be a few hours or a day before. <clears throat> um, and there is also built into the system this whole uh, newsletter setup, which you can use to send out recordings, to send out uh, other things that you featured at your club. You can customize this this email template, and the idea is that we're we're using the the same basic editing tools to edit our email content that we're using to edit our blog and our, our homepage. So it's potentially fewer things to learn rather than going over here to edit the blog and going over there to work with MailChimp or some other program. Uh, and so all the the WordPress for, for Toastmasters content when I'm scheduling one of these webinars is set out sent out using this, this system. Um, there's a local uh, news organization that actually uses it to send out their news of the day. Let's see. I... Are there other members in, let me see if there are other questions in the chat. Um, How do you create a new page on the home page? If, for example, I want to add a video to a second home page, well, I mean, you, your your website's going to have one home page, but you can have multiple pages. So uh, let's let's go through some of that, and this will also get into how you can customize the design of your site. 
So let's go back to our demo site. And what I have right now, uh, these were all separate pages. This is where I find the online application. Uh, there's a featured speeches page. And we want to add a new page that is, you know, awards and honors, something like that. So uh, and also when you create a new page on uh, some of these designs, it's going to pop up these uh, suggested design patterns, which you don't have to use. But if, if some if one of these looks good to you, you can use this as sort of a starting point for the page that you're creating. But we're going to create an awards and honors page. And this is probably going to be, you know, a photo gallery um, and maybe a few other elements. Let's say. Uh, check off a few different images here and create this gallery. Uh, and there's some layout options that we can play around with here. But th the point is when when you create a blog post, one advantage is it's just a news item. And if people go into the blog section, they're going to see the, the most recent thing you posted. When you create a new page, you need to give people some kind of pointer for how they're going to find their way to that page. Now, one thing we could do is we can go into the home page and we can edit this page and see uh see our fabulous awards and honors page and if i sorry back up a little bit if i highlight this and say i want to add a link I actually don't have to have the actual web address memorized if I for something that's internal to this site. I can just say awards and honors and oh come on. It's it's award, not awards. Is that what I is that award? Award singular. You're right. Thank you. Um all right, so so now I've got now I've got a link from the home page to the page that has that specific content. But if it if it's something that's that's pretty important and we want people to be able to find our way to it, we probably want to add it to this menu up here. And if you have an older website, some of the instructions I'm about to give you um, might not be correct because the the system for Toastmasters website design and uh, the organization of the menus changed in a recent release and all the new club websites are being set up with a new generation of WordPress themes, which are very, very customizable, but they work just a little bit differently. So I'm gonna show you the new way of doing this. I'm gonna go into edit site here and what's going to be different here is that instead of editing individual page content, I'm going to be editing sort of the outline of our site. So this is sort of an abstract version of what all our pages look like. There's a reserve spot where we can have a featured image. But there's a header that's included in all the pages of the site that's, that's the same. Um, and so if I want to add something to the resources section, I can click in here to edit the resources submenu. Let's see. Um, and I can see in this area over on the side where I can add another submenu link. And this is where I'll put in award and honors. And so this is going to be a drop-down menu where we have resources, which is a general page about our the resources on our site.
but under that is awards and honors. Uh, or if we, we wanted to make it a top level link, we would go in and add page link. And again, we can do awards and honors. And so actually we're gonna see this in two different spots when I save this and go back and look at the site. We can see a preview of it here, but let's let's save it and go look at it on the live site. And so now under resources, this includes as a new, appears as a new submenu, but we also have it over here. Now this might be a little bit too wide because depending on how big the person's monitor is, <laughs> I'm resizing the wrong thing here. On a smaller monitor, it's gonna kind of bunch up. Uh, but actually one good thing about WordPress is that it's been modernized in an era where a lot of us are seeing content on our phones. And so this is approximately what the website would look like on somebody's phone. So everything gets skinny down to, to one column, but it's still readable uh, and you can still navigate through it. And over here is where you would click to find the, the menu from a mobile phone browser. Um, so that, that's one of the things that you're you're tapping into here is the fact that the the people who create WordPress have thought of a lot of those issues of uh, mobile web uh, and search engine optimization and all these other things. And so probably I would go back and I would I would delete that words and honors at the end to make it fit a little bit better, um, and I can you know, further customize this in lots of different ways. I was thinking one of the ways that I would have used this during the pandemic is it would be been a great to be able to go into the website and just add a, a banner across the top that says, we're now meeting online. Uh, you know, guess what? If you show up for our, our in-person meeting, you're gonna be all alone. Uh, but here's how you can join us online. Maybe you would want to emphasize that on every single page. And one of the ways you could do that was by adding it to the header. Um, so when you sign up for one of these sites, it comes with a bunch of things built in by default, uh, but we can change a lot of things like the, the background color. And so if we wanted this to be a gray background, we actually have to make sure we've selected the right component. Um, and again, this is where that hierarchy comes in handy. And she might have to maneuver around a little bit to find the exact right thing that you need to change. Uh, I'm not finding it at the moment, to be honest with you. Um, so we'll put it back to red. Uh, but you can you can change almost everything about these sites from the the, the starter defaults, and hopefully the you know, the default design is going to be reasonable for for getting you started. Uh, but if you decide you want to make changes later, you can. Or you could decide that you want to use an entirely different theme. So if I exit out of this and go into the section here that says Appearance, we have these different options to, to choose from. And so... Here's one that's kind of um, different looking, but dramatic. Let me see if I can. A few things not working tonight. Oh, just took a minute. So I visit the site. I should see a visual makeover. It's actually not quite what I expected, but that might be because I've come in and modified this for, for a different demo. Um, but there, uh, you know, when you, when you, when you turn on a theme for a site, it starts out with the defaults, um, but the modifications you made are changed are saved to the, the database so that you can make, uh, changes la later on. I'm going to try one more time making a big change here. Let's see. Um, And go to the one with the 
big cover area up top. Is it sight? Okay. And so that, that's a different look for this, this website. The, the content in the center is still pretty much the same, but we've changed what the banner up top looks like. We still have our menu that has, has followed us around too. I thought I might take a moment to talk about collecting money uh, through the website. Um, if you're, if you're interested in that, uh, I've been working on updating the PayPal integration. So I have PayPal pulled up over here. So this is a, a website called actually developer.paypal.com. And you come in here to this section, this is apps and credentials. And the option is create app. Well, I mean, that sounds kind of intimidating, maybe if you're not a techie, uh, but you're, you're really connecting just a connection between the website and the PayPal service. Uh, one important thing to get right here is there are two modes to this. In the upper right-hand corner, there's this little, little widget that says sandbox or live. And right now we're in sandbox mode. If I want to collect real money instead of funny money, I have to toggle it over into the live mode. Um, in, in the sandbox mode, I actually have to create test accounts if I want to log in to use the PayPal functions. Uh, in the live mode, I can use my real account. So there are uh, a bunch of things in here that are live. I can go into the, the sandbox just to create something as a, as a test basis. And all you do is you, you put in a name for it. Hello. All right, PayPal. Yes, I want you to create an app. Create a merchant app called uh, My Club News, and we'll do create app. And you know the process is similar if you're using the the, the Stripe service, which is the the other one that. I support or RSVP maker supports where it asks you to, you're going to get two credentials and you need to enter them into your website. So I'm going to copy this thing that says client ID. And I need to go into the section of my settings for RSVP maker, which again is the program that handles the scheduling. It also handles collecting payments. And I'll put in the client ID. And I have to go back here and I have to get the secret key. So these are long numeric keys. Uh, lots of gobbledygook. Uh, should be relatively secure. Hackers aren't supposed to be able to guess that. And right now it was in sandbox mode, but I'm going to say that I want this to be production. I want to uh, collect real money. Now I put in the, the code I put in was a sandbox code. So it's actually not going to collect real money, but, uh, just to show you how it work, I need to make sure that it's toggled here into production mode, that my two keys are entered, and then I can save that. And from that point, if I wanted to in, um, In the settings, there's also this setting for the application form that allows you to put in the due schedule that you're following. So the one from Toastmasters International is already sort of programmed in here in US dollars. And you can put in the amount above that that you would be collecting. Um, and it will help you set up a page with a dues renewal button. And so for this demo site, that's already been done. Uh, it looks like this. There's a little place, placeholder in here. And if we go out and uh, view that page, that doesn't look good. 
Oh, this is actually set up right now to allow me to pay either with pay by credit card or pay by PayPal. And I'll say pay by PayPal. Again, I'll put in my, this is, this is funny money that I'm spending here, but I can complete my purchase here. Uh, for the Stripe, if I'm in sandbox mode, oh, it's actually a test transaction and say I'm not going to, it's not going to uh, allow transactions of less than $5. Well, I could, I could futz with that if I needed to, but uh, the, the main idea is, is you need to get those credentials out of either the PayPal or Stripe service. You record them in your website, and that will allow you to collect money either with member applications, or you can, you can collect an arbitrary amount of money for, uh, you know, a gift for the gift for the outgoing president, something like that. You could, you could set that up on your website to collect money. And and I, I do do this for commercial clients as well. So this is a a local gourmet website that hosts fancy dinners. Here's the fancy dinner that they're organizing for 185 per person, and you would put in your information here uh, and register and get prompted to to pay. Let's see. Are there I think I've gotten I've addressed the questions that I've seen in the chat, but I might have might have missed some along the way. Please, if you have a question, feel free to unmute and ask your question if it doesn't if we haven't gotten to it. I think Nini had one. Uh, Nini, do you had yes. a question that I, I was a I was associated with as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's about the not the RSVP, but the guest form when they, you know, inquire to go to a meeting and then they put in their email address. And is there like a way to compile those emails so we can send out a follow up? Well, I, I guess, are, are you guys from Hollywood Toastmasters? Is that right? Oh, no, Menlo Park Toastmasters. Menlo Park Toastmasters. I mean, I guess I don't necessarily know how you have it have it set up on, on your site. Um, you know, there, there are a number of different uh, contact form plugins for, for uh, WordPress. Okay. Where, and so they, they may work differently. Uh, I could try and go over to your website. Um, so you guys have your own domain, right? Um, that I'm not sure. I didn't set it up, uh, so I'm just mm, managing it. Okay, well, hold on a moment. Um, I should be able to find it in here. Menlo, uh, and I didn't mention that the the. the these websites are set up to use a subdomain of toastmouse.org by default. Um, okay. And I, yeah, I thought you guys might've had your own domain, but it doesn't look like it. You, you, you can register your own domain, uh, and add that to the site. Let's say scroll down is my, is this your site? Yes. And this is, this is the form you're talking about. All right. So let me see how that is set up. Do, cause I didn't do that for you. Um, Okay, that's here. And this is uh, WP Form Simple Contact Form. And so, yeah, I, I don't necessarily know uh, the details. There probably probably is a way that they could be saved to the website. Um, uh, yeah, I don't I don't have uh, automation for that. Uh, what about the RSVP report? It lists. It well, this, show the, your that different? Yeah, it, this is different. This, this is using a, a separate plugin 
Um, oh, and, and probably probably there there may be customizations or or add-ons to that that plugin that would allow them to do what they're talking about. But I haven't worked with w, the WP Forms uh, plugin uh, that much. I mean, it, it, that, that's um, that's the, yeah. the joy and sometimes the frustration of of WordPress is that it can be configured many different ways. Um, Do you have another form that you that could provide that? Uh, the, the, I mean, there definitely definitely are some. I think we we use uh, Contact Form Seven at, at Club Awesome. Uh, let's see, do I have Club Awesome even open? Um, but I, I don't I don't know that we have gotten enough that we have uh, worried about about uh, tracking them. Um, we do have, I believe, a contact us form uh, down here, um, and you know it, it, it's somewhat convenient rather than than listing an email address uh, on the website. Um, <clears throat> uh, but you know, I I could uh, I could follow up with you for for more details on that. Uh, one thing we do have at, at online presenters, we had uh, particularly in the past, we had uh, during COVID, we had a lot of people filling out that uh, contact form on the Find a Club page for our, our site, and so we set up an autoresponder where they immediately get back a message that says, "Go look to our go look at our website" because it, it's going to answer a lot of your questions. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't have our VP of membership also send them a personal follow up, but they get an immediate response that that does answer a lot of their questions if they haven't found their way to our website yet. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, because every time someone we have to put it in another, you know, we have to compile it so we know who's who's coming and who's not just sending but not meeting up so we can. You know, right. them. Well, I mean, you know, I guess we 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 use the RSVP function for a, a lot of that. Is we try and get people to uh, not just put in an inquiry, but you know, if you're interested, come see a meeting. That's the way to really find out what the experience is like in our in our club, and and we do have all of those compiled in the report on the website. Um, so, do when the guests come, they sign they sign up on an RSVP? Yeah. No. And so, yeah, I, I, I encourage them, you know, it's very important at online presenters because we're, we're virtual and that's the only way we're going to find out about people is by getting them to register in some way. Uh, but also for my, you know, traditional club, it, we're, we meet in a hybrid format these days, but even if they're coming in person, it's nice if we get a little bit of the information about the person up front so we encourage them, you know, sometimes somebody might come to our club with another person, right? And so they didn't both sign up online and that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the important thing is that we we get them and that we make a good impression on them. Okay. So um, I, I will just mention one more time that I, I'm aware that the documentation and the training materials could be better than they are. Um, I've put a lot of work into the, you know, I have like a, a six part video series that goes into some detail on all the, these different aspects. So I have put some time and effort into it. Uh, you have no idea how much time and effort I've put into working on the actual programming and trying to make everything work together. Uh, so I'm working on it. Uh, you know, one virtue of uh, a custom solution like this is that if it doesn't work the way you want it to, uh, if it if the way it works doesn't make sense to you, you can let me know and we may be able to change something. I mean, I, ha I have a long to-do list of things that I know I want to change and I haven't gotten to yet. But, you know, if you're, if you're asking for it, if you're making good suggestions, uh, your suggestion may go to the front of the line just because you're the person asking. Uh, the squeaky wheel, uh, as they say, uh, gets the grace. So uh, don't be afraid to be a little bit of a squeaky wheel.
I'll be a, uh, I'll be a squeaky wheel, David. Just real quick, <laughs> okay. uh, the RSVP events I, I had to turn them off because they were colliding with another form uh, generator that I was doing. Uh, I want to turn them back on because there's a lot of power that you've you've invested in this. Is there a way for the well, like to get guests like Nini has talked about, um, and have that that RSVP form be more customizable? Because we have to ask questions like, "How did you find us?" Like on our website or a Google okay, search, yeah, all let, that let, other let stuff. Me, let me show you. And then is it is it yeah is it tied to like a specific uh, date or is it because right now we just have this you know come and join us at the next meeting type of thing, right? Yeah, well, I mean, RSVP Maker is is set up to be, according to, but you know, by date. You know, actually, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be hard for me to 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 make it into a general contact form, and maybe I should do that, um, so that people could sort of RSVP for no specific date, uh, and and use the same basic form. But let me go through how you would customize the form. It is. Uh, somewhat similar to how you customize the agenda. So let's see. Um, so I went to this event um, and I'm going to go to the form. And this, let's see. Okay, so this is the section with the form. And I'm going to say I want to edit my default form. Uh, and so you'll see this is similar to the, the widgets for altering the agenda. If I come down to the end here, there's a thing that says, do I want to add a text field? Do I want to add radio buttons, multiple choice, or a text area, um, or a, a selection? Uh, and so we can show you a couple of those those options. So we're going to add a text field that says, um, where did you hear about us? We have that as a drop down box because we want to we want to categorize how do we how do we all right well we're I, getting I, our I, traffic. I'll show you how to do both, but uh, right now this is just going to be. Add it as a text field. Oh, come on. Because you didn't you didn't choose the type, the field type. Oh. There we go. All right. So this is going to get added down to the end, uh, right before the guest widget. Uh, and we can say, um, is this a required field? There's also a, include on the guest form. Uh, include on the guest form is where, for example, I have something like meal choice. Uh, and I want the, um, I'm allowing people to sign up and, and bring guests. And I want to get the meal choice for the guests, not just for the, mm -hmm. the meeting host. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we toggle that on. So this is a text field. Uh, so let's do uh, radio buttons. Let's say um, and the choice is going to be none. So we will add that. Um, and here's what it looks like here, but we'll, we'll, we'll go out and see what it looks like on the form. The select field would be uh, a similar thing. So um, let's see. So it's similar to the other question about where did you hear about us? Um, 
media newspaper listing um okay so this is here and we can modify it further so we made that choice to change to our default form so if i go out and view this meeting and go down to the rsvp section oh <laughs> the date has passed okay um Hold on a moment. Let me just move this into the future. Um, so this is how you would change the date on an event. So we'll change it from today to Friday. Do, 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 do. We'll save that, go and view it. All right, now we should see, how did you hear about us as a text entry? And then we have Chekhov Godlike Super Being, and we heard of, we actually heard about you through the newspaper. And I'm going to bring my wife to this meeting and sign up. All right. And then that'll send an automatic email to whoever we set that up to. And then, right, right. And then, then right, even a response to them, say, if we wanted to give them the Zoom link right away or give them a, we're going to send them a, a, a Zoom link separately type of thing. Right. Um, so, so, yeah, there's a, there is a confirmation and reminders uh, section in the options. And by the way, this option screen appears when you first create an event. Um, but after that, if you want to get to it, you can get to that those those menus across the top, or you can open it in the edit and click on this button here. It opens up that screen. Uh, you have your basic settings, which are date and time, and are we collecting RSVPs? We have the form, and then we have the confirmation message. The default confirmation message is just thank you, but it could be thank you, and here's our Zoom link. Um, you can set it to automatically send a reminder message mm -hmm. X number of hours before the event. Uh, and so if I add that, uh, by default, it'll just put in reminder Toastmasters meeting and it'll, it'll model it off after whatever the confirmation message was, but then we can, we can customize that further because maybe we don't want to say thank you. We say, hope to see you in an hour or, or whatever it is. And this is for guests only, or is, does the the members and guests use the same form? Uh, it, 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 I, I actually have members who often will fill out that form, maybe because they're confused about it. But I want the members to sign up for roles. Okay, um, it's, wanna, it's a separate process. It's a separate. Yeah, process. really, okay. really, really meant to be a separate part process. Is is the RSVP is it's much more for guests. Uh, okay, thank you. And it, you know, it, regardless. Uh, uh, was there actually, you said something about a conflict with uh, some other our, um, uh, some other widget or? Yeah, it was a forms uh, thing that I ended up using. I ended up having to turn off RSVP host because I mean, did, 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 it, did it seem to um, cause errors? It might be something like JavaScript from one script is interfering with the other. I, I don't yeah, know. it was conflicting the JavaScript between the RSVP and this other form editor, and it wasn't allowing it to fully submit. It would submit halfway through, and it wouldn't give the email or the confirmation screen afterwards saying, thank you for submitting, da 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 da, -da that type right. of thing. So. Well, I mean, there, 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 it's possible we could figure out what the, you know, what specific... JavaScript kind yeah, of yeah, and I think I think I'm just I think we're gonna definitely it was more of just get something out uh -huh. mentality. Sure. And now that we that's why I'm here. I wanted to see what more is there to to because we just basically have it as a landing page and a red guest a guest uh, uh generating process uh, sure. site. So okay. And we want to do version two where we're actually putting all this all the, the full power of this thing in, in, in the place. Okay. 
Well, I think we, you know one thing I'm going to get out of, out of this conversation is is uh, I I I think I will take a little bit of time to come up with a way of using RSVP Maker as basically your um, your contact can contact us form and having it archived in a similar format. Um, uh, I'll I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but but it, it shouldn't be that hard. Um, and so that could maybe be uh, a simpler way. Again, part part of what I've tried to do here is make it so that you can use the same basic techniques to solve a few different problems. Um, all right. Well, we've gone way past when this was supposed to end, but it it started way past when it was supposed to start. So I guess that's fair. And I I have just one question, David. Sure. If we have that probably the the old web. We have the old website. Ah, uh, the old the old theme. We, uh, yeah, the old theme, yes. And how could we upgrade? Will it show all of those different variations that you right? And so so if you if you go to your if you're logged in as the administrator, mm -hmm. if you go into uh up top, oh see, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I'm not sharing my screen once again. So when you're logged in up top, it says you can go to your dashboard, but there is also a link straight to the theme section here. Uh, and that will show all these current choices. Um, and again, these can all be treated as, as just uh, starting points, basically. Um, I think a couple of these might not or might be only showing up because I'm logged in as the super administrator of it. Um, but these, uh, these are the ones that I've been advertising for new clubs. Uh, and they they use the the new new more customizable approach, so it you know, might be a little bit of a, a pain to to move from one to one to the other, but but once you get it there, uh, it will give you more flexibility going forward. All right, well I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it there for tonight. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, if if you if you have further questions, uh, and and particularly if you well I mean. Sarah, I mean, I, I should give you a shout out. Sarah had me in to a district event where she actually said, well, wait a minute, David, I want to say something and, and came up and, and said something uh, very positive about the experience of working with this framework. Um, I know there are, there are bumps in the road along the way. And so I appreciate you sticking with it and, and saying nice things about it every once in a while. So okay. that's uh, that, that's cool. Uh, have a great night, everybody, and, and thanks for being here. Thank you, David. Good night. Thank, Good you. Night. Right. Thank you. Thank you, David.